so hi guys, um, thanks a lot for coming out. Uh, my name is Carrie Liu, I am a senior data scientist at WeWork. And today we'll be discussing a little bit about how we do recommendation systems at WeWork. Uh, unfortunately, this talk will not mention much in the way of deep learning or neural nets. But I like to think that this talk is about data science for the rest of us. So for like the 95% of companies out there who aren't quite ready for 20 layer nets, but still could use some machine intelligence injected into their business processes. So uh, how many of you have heard of WeWork? OK, a few. It's promising. Marketing's doing a good job. Um, so WeWork, for the rest of you guys who don't know, is this company um, who essentially sells office space to other companies. And they, we first started out in New York with a single building back in 2010. And over the last eight years, we've actually expanded to over 400 buildings now um, across 95 cities and like 20 or 25 different countries. So it's truly a global corporation at this point. Um, but our main business model remains real estate. And the thing that people don't know is that WeWork actually has a pretty um, big and growing technology arm. So we have a pretty uh, diverse array of technology products. And that actually puts us in the unique position of being able to combine data from the physical world through sensors and such um, with data from the digital world um, in online spaces. That's really interesting. Um, so in the physical space, we use data to optimize how we construct, maintain, and actually design our location. So like looking at ways to reduce like building costs and maintenance, um, figuring out ways to like optimize our supply chain logistics. Um, so all like the nitty gritty stuff that uh, is really important to running an actual business that deals in physical space. And then on the digital side, our main goal is just to focus on making people or helping people make new connections. Um, as, a, as another service to our members so that they can accelerate their careers, get advice on their business, and all that good stuff. Um, so this deluge of new data has resulted in an increasingly noisy inventory of people, products, services, and other content, which is why I'm here. So in order to better facilitate these connections, WeWork um, started this nascent machine learning team last year to focus mostly on recommendation systems. Um, I was one of the founding members of the team. The other two uh, founding members unfortunately couldn't be here today, but uh, the handsome gentleman in the middle is our original software engineer, uh, Alex, and the guy on the right is our uh, fearless product manager, Harsha. Um, so we'll spend the next few minutes just kind of giving you an over overview of the data science ecosystem at, uh, at WeWork as we designed it. Um, so basically we'll start with data structures, all the data that we have simpler features that we built um, when we first started out. Uh, we'll cram in some machine learning a little bit later uh, in the talk. And all these things um, are essentially housed within a novel experimentation framework that allows us to constantly test new hypotheses, iterate on our designs, and just learn in general from our su successes and most importantly our failures, of which we have lots of. Um, so the first product we worked on was actually something called the member network. And you can think of the member network as similar to a LinkedIn, uh, but strictly for our, our members. Um, so the content of our member network consists of posts or other member-generated content that you see on a news feed that will be refreshed every time you log in. So this is kind of an example of what it might look like. Um, and then when we started out as a team, we saw that the member network had already been a couple years old, so some other team in the past had created it. And their design basically uh, ordered the post in the newsfeed chronologically, um, along with some additional business logic to boost certain posts. Uh, but all in all, it just wasn't very intelligent, wasn't very personalized at all. Um, we saw that the engagement numbers on the newsfeed uh, were not very high, definitely um, suboptimal. So we decided that we had to expend some effort to make it of more use to our members so that they actually go and you know, participate in the social network. So that was kind of our mandate, make a better news feed. Um, and this is kind of like how our data hierarchy looks like when you kind of draw it out. So similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you got to start at the bottom with your data. And then you'll eventually make your way to the top of the pyramid where you achieve human self-actualization through machine learning. Um, so we start at the bottom, and that'll be our data entities, otherwise known as our raw data. 
Uh, for this particular use case of our newsfeed, we have two major classes of entities, our members, and the content that we serve them. So this would just take the form of posts from, from other members. Um, we've collected a whole bunch of metadata and other information about these two entities. So for our members, we have like geographical location like data and uh, other spatial characteristics, but we also have data that we pull from the me member profile. So this includes things like, uh, like job title, company, uh, various skills and interests that they might include in the profile, plus a short free text bio. And on the item side, the post side, we have timestamp and location, but also the text of the actual post, any links that they include, pictures, and other bits of metadata. And lastly, we have the interactions between these, between our members and the posted content. And that typically takes the form of likes, comments, messages, and follows. Uh, so the next step above data entities are our derived relationships, which is kind of like a term that we sort of made up to describe quantitative relationships between our entities. And you can think of this layer as where feature engineering and data enrichment happen. Uh, so speaking of data enrichment, there are four main types of data enrichment that we utilize at WeWork. Um, the first two are pretty self-explanatory, tagging and taxonomizing. Uh, we just, there's a lot of manual effort involved in labeling different pieces of data and placing them in the correct hierarchy and taxonomy. And the next two things are, include classification and clustering. So we do a fair amount of both supervised and unsupervised learning to do things like segment members, group different posts together, and you know, add additional labels um, to our entities. Um, so the next step up from that is our, our prediction signals and our models, and they kind of work hand in hand to actually uh, generate predictions and generate these rankings. Um, so for signals, they're basically just ways to rank a list of items according to a derived relationship. And you can think of them as just the predictors that might eventually go into a machine learning model downstream. Um, so for example, we can hypothesize that you are more likely to interact with the posts if it's from one of your friends. So first we'll derive who your friends might be on the network by looking at your activity, and we'll sort of create a proxy for how strong that relationship could be. And then we'll rank all the posts by how many of your friends have interacted with it. So it's pretty basic. Um, and on the other side, we have prediction models, which are your classic machine learning models that incorporate a whole set of features and signals, as well as label training data or feedback data to actually predict directly some behavior that we want to drive. So for example, we might create a model that predicts there's a high chance I would click on this post due to some combination of factors. So it's probability of engagement conditional on X, um, where you know, that post might come from a secondary connection, and it might contain text that is similar to text found in your profile. And lastly, on top of all these things, we have this experimentation and optimization layer, which is where all the fun A-B testing and you know, multi-arm bandits um, are done, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so to actually create the final news feed for a particular member, we do this thing called interleaving, where we basically look at all of our buckets and just randomly select posts from each bucket, so that in the end, the final uh, news feed uh, object that we serve is just a collated collection of all the posts drawn from the buckets according to some fixed uh, uniform distribution. So it's pretty basic. Um, we didn't want to do anything that complex for our initial product. Um, and more importantly, it was very lightweight on the engineering side. Uh, and then finally, we have a feedback loop, which is also very engineering heavy. We wanted to make sure that we collected um, all the engagement data, what happens to the posts, what sorts of responses it gets when it gets served to each member. So this is kind of a crucial part and um, involves very tight coupling between data scientists and engineers. So our initial product was released maybe a few months ago. Um, and then we tracked the results over the course of a month. We saw some pretty drastic lifts in all of our relevant KPIs. And importantly, this initial product involved almost zero machine learning. So why am I up here? Well, I'm gonna talk about machine learning now. Um, so how do we improve on the MVP? We thought there were probably a lot of different ways we, we, in which we could tackle this problem. Um, the nice thing about the MVP that we released was that we were able to decompose individual performance from each signal so that we could look at the signals that did very well in terms of conversion rate and alternatively, the signals that performed quite poorly in terms of conversion rate and figure out basically what went wrong. So why might these signals be performing poorly? So for one of them, we have this hypothesis that the existing keyword matching scheme was a little bit too strict and lacked a lot of semantic nuance. So it makes a lot of sense. If, for example, you had a member who indicated an interest in machine learning on his profile, you would think intuitively that he might be interested in articles that contain the words artificial intelligence, big data, data science, and whatnot. But 
this existing uh, business logic didn't really capture this semantic nuance, unfortunately. Um, so we decided that we could replace it with just a much better signal um, using you know, fancy machine learning algorithms that would better capture the semantic meaning of these text entities. Um, so for, we created a new derived relationship and used like a very standard doc to vec text embedding to convert all of our text blobs into some sort of numerical representation from which you can just calculate cosine similarity. And on top of that relationship, we built a new signal which uh, recommended posts that were semantically similar to other posts that you engaged with in the past. Released into production, um, calculated the results over the course of a, of, of a month, and we saw pretty drastic lifts and improvements uh, in our conversion rate uh, as compared to the old signal. So that was pretty promising. Um, meant that we were probably on the right track doing all this machine learning. Um, so the next thing we wanted to tackle was, are there potentially other useful relationships that have yet to be explored that we didn't get to in the first product? So we had a hypothesis that we could form useful clusters of members who share the same taste in post posted content. So doing kind of a janky version of collaborative filtering. Um, so we actually leveraged this thing called the minhash algorithm, which is a really efficient way to calculate user similarities based on their post engagement history. Um, so it worked out pretty nicely. We based a new signal off of that, which recommended post and engage members who share your post engagement history, and saw, again, some pretty nice lifts uh, in our KPI. So one last hypothesis we had was that the intent of a post was actually a meaningful predictor of member engagement. So if you think about it like this, most of our members use the member network for like a couple of different reasons. Uh, some members use the network to post about their business, try to get some uh, some pro promotion going. Some members use the network to ask for help from other members in the community. Some members want to use the network to uh, establish you know, transactional activities or like host social gatherings. Um, so the way you use the network would maybe a relevant predictor in how you might respond to posts that were served to you. So for this, we actually ended up building an entirely new classifier uh, that inferred the intent of a post with some probability. Um, we went, went back to the Wartovec well uh, trained a word embedding and then fed it through a gradient boosting classifier to predict the intent of a post. So we tagged all the posts with this algorithm and created a new signal that recommended posts that were similar in intent to the posts you've engaged with in the past. And again, released into production, saw that they did really well, and we were happy. One last thing that we wanted to do, though, was explore ways that we could actually change or explore ways that we could um, collate or collect the final news feed from these disparate series of signals. So before, we had leveraged this interleaving algorithm, which you know, performed pretty well, had its moment in the sun, but maybe we could do better. A couple different attempts at this. Um, so we actually ended up building a supervised machine learning model using literacy regression uh, with a full signal set in order to rank posts for the news feed based on their probability of engagement. Uh, and found that, oh crap, how do we go back? Yeah, performance wasn't optimal, unfortunately. Uh, we had run it in production for a while, but the numbers weren't uh, stacking up to what we wanted it to be. Um, so we had to go back to the drawing board and figure out a different approach. So we kind of abandoned the uh, supervised learning method and uh, looked into these things called multi-armed uh, multi bandits. So instead of randomly selecting posts from each signal according to a fixed distribution, we would use some sort of bandit methodology to learn the optimal distribution of posts from each signal, uh, given enough feedback data and over time. So this worked out pretty nicely. Um, the bandit that we used uh, is known as Thompson sampling. There's other bandits that you can explore on your own, but this one was pretty lightweight on the engineering side and it made a lot of sense for us. So with Thompson sampling, uh, every signal can be represented with a probability distribution of conversion values of data. And when you run the bandit for each iteration, you'll pull samples from each distribution and then select the sample with the highest value. And that's the, that's the bucket that you're going to pull your post from. So instead of our interleaving algorithm that looked like this, we introduced a bandit that looked more like this um, with a constantly changing distribution of values uh, for each signal. Um, and that's the overview of our current data science stack. Um, potentially, if I can get invited back in the future, we can actually talk about common nets and all this other you know, interesting stuff that this conference has all been about. But that's what we have now. So thanks a lot for listening. <laughs>